Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here, back in the naughty corner with another tutorial for you. And this tutorial sort of starts the mark of sort of a, an irregular sort of mini series on doing realistic rocks. Now, up until this point on the channel, we've always done what I call stylized rocks for wargaming stuff. Okay, and that's using emulsion paint, which remember is an acrylic. Okay, it's a form of acrylic, but using emulsion tester pots, using a, a, a small set of colours. Yeah, standard palette, yeah, and dry brush techniques to get various rock effects. Now, we did it on the uh, stylized wargaming hill, yeah, we used it to great effect on the court bog rock faces, and I even did a video on it, yeah, talking about how you actually do the te technique outside of doing a hill, just the painting technique. And it's a great technique, it's easy to do, because the colours are standardised, you can match them across a terrain set, revisit it years later and still be able to get exactly the same effects. But, with it being stylized, it's designed to look good at arm's length. Okay? A bit like dry brushing on a model or edge highlighting. Yeah, they look great when you're looking down at them at the table, but when you bring them a bit closer, you know, it starts to fall down a little bit. Okay? And it's much the same with the stylized hill painting you know, with the rock faces. And so what we're going to be doing is looking at more interesting rocks and different ways. Now a lot of this is from the railway community. Yeah, a lot of it from the old boys who taught me as I was sort of growing up and that sort of stuff. Yeah, especially my old scout leader. Yeah, he was a manic one for making stuff. We were always doing it. But for the purpose of these videos, now in the past I've always crafted my own rock faces using sculpting polystyrene or using papier mache and plaster bandage or cork bark. In this case we're, we're using Hearst Art, not Hearst Arts moulds, uh, woodland scenic moulds. Yeah, uh, they're rubber latex moulds that you can get. I'll do this. I'm working on a bit of a tutorial on them but that one's taking a bit longer. Yeah, so you'll see it coming up. Yeah, so keep your eyes out on that. Yeah, but for this purpose they're brilliant for what we're going to be doing. Now, the techniques I'm going to show you do work on the other rock faces, such as the polystyrene ones and the watch of cork bark ones. But obviously, yeah, this is a realistic technique. So the more realistic your surface looks, the more realistic the overall effect will, will look. Yeah, and for this tutorial, yeah, we are purely working with acrylics. Okay, now we are, I've got some house paint in there. That's because I can't be bothered to mix grey between black and white. And, you know, I just sprayed it out with an airbrush. Yeah, so... But it is still an acrylic, so don't worry. So, that's the battle plan. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get some really realistic rocks, really simply. Yeah, and pretty quickly, to be truthful. Yeah, so, come on over to the bench and let's get cracked on, eh? Okay, guys, we're at the bench and we've got all our stuff in front of us. Right, we've got our acrylic paint, so we've got a black and a white. We've got the emulsion grey, yeah, which is just a bit easier than mixing grey. We've got a burnt umber and we've got a yellow. Yeah, I've got a yellow. I've got some standard tap water there. Uh, the technique involves stippling, dry brushing and washing. So we've got a sponge, we've got our washing brushes and we've got a nice synthetic, yeah, for the dry brushing. We've got, obviously, a plate for a mixing palette and then we've got a rock face itself. Okay, now, first off, we need to mix up our, our colours. Now, obviously, I've got my emulsion grey here, yeah, uh, slate grey, I think it is, from Wilkinson's in the UK. Yeah, this is the same that this has been airbrushed with. Okay, so it's, this, it's the base colour. Now, like I say, I could have mixed this up using, a uh, what you call it, using black and white, but... It's just easy this way, guys. Yeah. So, we've got our base colour, and obviously the first stage is stippling. Okay. And, since it's a highlight, we need to obviously lighten up our base colour. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop a little bit of white in there. Okay. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Let's just take a bit off. And then on top of that, yeah, and this is where it starts to get a bit technical, well not technical, but a bit funky, we're going to mix some yellow in. Okay, now the reason for this is that when we've normally done stylized hills in the past, we've always done them with shades of grey. Not 50 shades, just a couple, but we've done them with shades of grey. And what I consider realistic rocks, i.e. northern European green field sort of mountain rocks, that sort of stuff, they're not standard grey. They're actually slightly off, and the tint, yeah, that you need for, to get that sort of to replicate it is yellow. Now, we just need a little bit because it is only a tint. So in fact, I'm going to put it there and I can put it in as I need it. Yeah. So, let's get a little bit of that. Yeah. Put 
that in there. Maybe a little bit more. There you go. Yeah. So, if I bring this up to the camera now, yeah, there you go. We've got our base colour, our white, and our yellow. Okay, and I need to mix this up now. Okay, trust me. Now, a lot of people don't like mixing when it comes to terrain making, and the reason being is it's really hard to standardise it, you know, when you come back to it in the future. Okay, now, when it comes to rocks, that's not a problem, okay? The simple fact of the matter is that rocks, they're not, what you call it, nature isn't standardised. Okay, and there you go. Yeah, do you see it's got a slight tint to it? Yeah. Okay, so that's perfect now. So what we're going to do is just grab a bit, spread it out a bit here so we can thin it down. Make sure that I get a clean bit so I don't drag the yellow streaks into it. Yeah, and then we can use that for stippling. So, there's our first colour. I know you're not going to believe me, but trust me on this. Right. So, oh, I need to dampen this. There we go. Right. Dead simple. Get your sponge. Dab it about. Take off the excess. Remember, it's about the dabbing effect. It is not about smearing it. And you're going to put about, what, shall we say 90% coverage on it? I oh, know, it looks awful, doesn't it? Yeah, try and aim coming down from the top. Yeah, make sure you get into the creases. Yeah, you can force it in with this one. A bit more. Just grab that. It's easier if I grab it. Bring it up, actually. Yeah. Now remember, guys, I am doing this on the flyers and recording, so, you know, forgive the odd errors. Yeah, so we're just stippling it on. I really need to get into those corners there, yeah. Around here. A bit more. Yeah, bring it in here. Across the top. In that corner there, don't like that. There we go. Right, so that's the first one done. Okay, now we need to leave this to dry, so we'll come back once this is dry. Okay, okay, guys, there you have it. Yeah, far more subtle now, isn't it? Right, now all we need to do is just simply keep repeating the process, lightening it up. So yeah, more than likely, this is just simply adding a little bit more white, mixing it in, stippling it, making sure I concentrate on the top areas, okay, and I don't smear it, etc. Yeah, so what we're probably going to do is we'll do a little fast forward with this one because, you know, I'll be keep topping it up. Off we go.
they are the guys. Okay, the stippling technique, as you see, I've taken it up. By using that little yellow tint, it creates far more realistic what you call it, rocks. Far, far more realistic rocks. Now, it's still a little bit monotone, if you know what I mean. Perhaps monotone isn't the right word, but you get what I mean. It's still very, it's still very grey. Now, what we're going to do is just create a couple of little contrasts. So, before we do anything else, what I'm going to do is my dry brushing brush. Yeah. I'm going to get some of this white, sort of mix it on the fly, on the palette, tone it down just a little. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, I wouldn't say it's exactly dry brushing because it's still sort of quite wet, but it's very thinned. It's only going to apply to the top areas. Yeah, and I'm going to work top down on the piece. Yeah. And all I'm looking to do is just bring out all the natural cragginess of it. Okay? And there we go. Doesn't it make it pop? Right, it's still very grey. And what we need to do now is get some what's got acrylic washes in there, some brown and some blacks. Now, before I do that, what I'm going to do is just quickly clean up my workspace, so I'll be back in a moment. Right, guys, I'm all set up now. Uh, OK, we've got uh, burnt umber and black acrylic. Yeah, dark brown, basically. Yeah, an artistic one. We've just got some plain house water. Yeah, plain tap water. Yeah, I'm going to put, flood my palette there so I can draw off it. And we've got a little blob of black and a little blob of brown there. Yeah, and what we're going to do is, much like the, what do you call it, uh, weathering the buildings with washes, we're going to pre-wet our piece. Yeah, give it a good coating, get it nice and liberal. Yeah, don't be shy. Yeah, you'll see I've got it on a slant for this bit, yeah, because that's because I want the, the moisture to run where it would run in nature. Okay, so I'm not going to be picking this one up and sort of throwing it about a bit and all that sort of stuff. So, let's speed this up a little. I don't want to over flood it, obviously, because that would be bad. Draw off the excess, spread it around. Yeah, so pre wetting it, go up and make sure. Don't want to rush this bit because it's important, but you know, at the same time, conscious of time. Right, so pre wet. Right, we're going to start off with the browns. Well, with the brown. Yeah, dip it in a bit of water as well, loosen it up a bit. Yeah, and start putting it around cracks and over pieces. Yeah, spread it around a bit. Yeah, the water already will be starting doing, it, doing its job. Yeah, but we just want to give it a bit of a hand. Now, depending on how brown you want it, depends, yeah, on what's on top of it. If it's a rock face with earth on top of it, you know, like the side of a cliff or something like that, then it's, you know, over time, rain would pick up the dirt, it would wash it down the face, and it would be dirtier. Whereas if it's sort of a mountain or, you know, the rocks are sticking up out of the ground with no earth on top of them, yeah, it's slightly different because obviously, yeah, there's no dirt to wash down onto it. Right, so, get that quickly now, and back onto the feathering. Now, what we're going to do is extra water, yeah, and we're just going to move this lot around. Yeah, just feather it out. Yeah, let the water do the work, but move it into the creases, move it where you need it. Yeah, if you've got large areas of grey, yeah, where you've overstippled, yeah, use it to, to sort of break those up. Yeah, so, yeah, move it into there. Someone wants me, I'm popular. Right, so give it a quick wash into there. Now, there's no flow aid in this, I'm using the water to carry it. Yeah, which means obviously I've got to do a bit of work and move it around to where I want it. Yeah, but it's no biggie. Yeah, I'm just grabbing a little bit and, you know, stain if you want. Not enough to really do the cracks that much, but enough. 
Yeah, that's right, it's coming together. Right, now onto the black. Okay, and with regards to the black, yeah, I really want to use it to, to sort of darken up these shades. Let me bring this up close now, I've done it. Yeah. It's quick, you know, it's not perfect, guys. You know, I'm doing it on camera, you know, I'm a bit under pressure here, but you can immediately see it's starting to pop. It's starting to look a lot more realistic now we've moved away from those standard shades of grey, even with our little cheeky yellow tint. Yeah, so, get me black. Loosen it a little, yeah, and... Yeah, major corners, major crevices. Da -da -da, da -da -da. I'm just debating whether I should sing. No, don't sing, Mal, for God's sake, don't sing. Should I sing? No, don't sing, for God's sake, both don't sing. You'll lose subscribers by a bucket ton. We'll save singing for another episode, eh? Yeah. I'm specifically looking for the odd cracks that may have been missed out. You know, really nice ones that I can pull out and make it sort of define it a bit. Yeah, now you could just do a blanket wash, mix them both together and just let, the, let them fall where they fall. Yeah, but I think for the amount of time it takes, it's worth the effort. Yeah, go in, once again, stipple them down. Yeah, you'll see you're taking quite a lot of it back, to be truthful. Yeah, that's okay, that's what we want to do, yeah. This is half about defining the cracks and half about giving those sort of... Oh, yeah, that's a bit way excessive there, isn't it? Yeah, about giving those sort of dark areas of rock, you know, where you get naturally dark rock. So don't worry if you spread it over, you know, over a flat area. Yeah, Yeah, just make sure you break the pigment up so it's not you haven't got large splodges of black, if you know what I mean. Okay. Oh, or brown for that matter. Yeah, so if you have got large splodges, just go in and use the, the sort of suction effect on the brush just to drain them a little. There we go. Right, let's bring that over to the camera. Okay, now this is one of those that you really want to, I mean, you can give it a blast with a hairdryer, but to be perfectly honest, I like to let them dry naturally. The reason being is that if you hit with a hairdryer, you, you, you shove all the liquid and the pigment up to one area to make a blob and then it splashes. And because it's not pre-wetted anymore, you'll get tide marks, yeah? So we just need to let this just settle down and then we'll just do the last finishing touches on it. So, there you go. I'll come back when it's dry, eh? And here we go. Now it's dried. Yeah. Doesn't it look lovely? Now it is missing one final thing. We, we've toned it down, we've brought it in more into the browns, yeah, we've got our variation. Yeah, there's the odd little spot I've, I've messed up with, but you know, working under camera. Yeah, I can spot them. I don't know if you can. Don't start picking and picking. In fact, guys, please don't start picking my work apart <laughs> in, the, in the comments. You'll devastate me. Okay, our dry brush, yeah, that we did our initial final sort of like edge highlighting. Yeah, we need to get a little bit of pop back into it. Yeah, so what we're going to do is with the same dry brush that I haven't cleaned, yeah, we're going to come in and just lightly, yeah, over the more grey areas. Yeah, we'll leave the muddy ones. Yeah. And then, yeah, we'll go in with a little bit of pure white if we've got some. Have we got some there? Yeah. And we've got to be very gentle with this. Okay, so going in with almost pure white. Do not want to press too heavy with this. Do not want to go over where I've excessively browned it along the bottom. Yeah, do want do want to concentrate on the top of it because that would be the more exposed areas. I mean, in a in a hill diorama, this would be 
either have more rocks on top of it or up against what you call it sort of a cliff and it'd be muddy up like here with grass and stuff like that but just at these exposed bits let's make them pop yeah and then very finally with your finger just rub over them again yeah and what that does it sort of blends them in and it gets rid of the sort of when you dry brush you get like spots of brightness yeah and it just makes it a lot more just natural just at the tops yeah and that is us done so there you have it guys let me bring it off how easy was that eh right let me get tidied up and we'll finish off that's it guys that's all done now yeah uh, as you can see a really easy technique to do yeah I botched it in a couple of little places you know and I think the tint was slightly off but you know it's a it's a tutorial piece yeah if you spend a little bit more time and dedication and don't have the distraction of filming yeah you can produce stuff like this which is awesome and realistic now the key things to remember from this technique is use that little bit of yellow just to tint it off the grayscale yeah that will give you far more realistic rocks when we're talking about the sort of northern Europeans. Remember the placement of the rock, is it going to be, is it going to have earth on top of it? How much dirt is going to wash down on it? Yeah, uh, on top of that the stippling technique, don't rub, yeah, build it up in patches and don't be worried about flooding it or try to make the shade look right. Use the stippling to get the colours of the rocks right and then use your washes for your shade. Your browns to generally dirty it down, yeah, your black to what you call it, to sort of give the impression of depth in the crevices, etc. Yeah, so really an interesting technique, really easy to do. I hope you found it useful. We're going to be covering more techniques like these, so one of these videos will pop up maybe once, maybe once a month, maybe once every two months, you know, when I get round and I'm playing and that sort of stuff. Okay, now uh, moving forward, as always, if you've liked it, like it. If you know someone who could really, you know, is doing this sort of stuff, give them a share, point them in this direction. Yeah, as always, any questions, any comments, anything you want to add to this, get them in the comments, guys, yeah, because I always answer the comments. And then finally, guys, you know, if you really do like the stuff, yeah, and you want to support you know, more tutorials and me doing these dedicated high quality tutorial, they are high quality in my book guys, you know, production value is going up, you see the little graphics, it's getting good isn't it, yeah, anyway, yeah, consider Patreon guys, I know it's just a dollar a month or a couple of dollars a month if, you, if you're feeling generous, but it all adds together, yeah, it makes me, gives me the time to do this, it gives me the resources to do this, and it, it you know, Makes me happy making great content for you guys and helping the community, because that's my dream. Anyway, guys, enough about that. Listen, I uh, hope you've liked it. More of them coming soon, yeah? For now, I'll see you on Sunday night on the live show. All the best, guys. Ta-da!